Welcome, thank you for joining us, for joining the St Matthew's Church family today. Good Friday. My name is Claire, Claire Mason, and I am a member of the staff team at St Matthew's. We're going to take time today to consider those events of that first Good Friday. When Jesus Christ willingly chose to suffer and to die in our place. We're going to hear from God's word. We're going to listen to songs that help us to focus on the cross. And we'll have the opportunity to respond in prayer. If you have children, uh, children aged 11 and under, then there is a video that you can watch with them on the St Matthew's Church YouTube website. There are also some notes that you can use and some craft activities. I'm going to begin now by leading us in prayer. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have this time today to gather together and to focus on the events of that first Good Friday. We pray that you help us to see the seriousness of our sin and the enormity of our guilt as we consider the death of your son on the cross. His blood shed for us so that we might be forgiven. We pray that you will be at work in our hearts. We long to be able to express our gratitude to you in uh, the way that our lives are changed, in changed words and thoughts and actions as we come before you this Good Friday. Amen. Frank will be speaking to us from uh, the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, helping us to reflect on those events of Good Friday. Um, and so I am going to read uh, 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 21 to 25 um, for us. You might find it helpful um, to have a Bible open uh, so that you can follow along. So 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 21 to 25. I'm just going to pause, just give you a moment uh, to find that. 1 Peter, chapter 2, beginning at verse 21. To this you were called... Because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they held their insults at him, he did not retaliate. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. So that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. We're now going to listen to the song, O oh, to see the dawn of that darkest day. A song that helps us to think about the events of that darkest day, the day when Christ became sin for us. The words will appear on the screen for you to follow along. Tried by sinful men 
torn and beaten land Nailed to a cross of wood This the power of the cross Christ became sin Took the blame, bore the wrath we stand forgiven at the cross. Oh, to see the pain written on your face. Hi, my name's Helen. Um, I work as the administrator here at St Matthew's Church and I've been asked to read from the book of Isaiah for us today. 
So Isaiah chapter 53, we're just going to read a few verses and I'll give you a moment to find that. So it's Isaiah chapter 53, we're going to start at verse 4 and read through to verse 6. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Christ suffered for you leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. Well, over the last month, our lives have changed beyond recognition and we're all finding ourselves under pressure and put to the test in how we respond. Every public institution is under immense pressure, the NHS struggling, schools closing, um, police having to do very different things, even our Prime Minister um, going into intensive care this week, uh, many of his colleagues in the Cabinet, in the senior team, having symptoms, having to isolate too. Every public institution is under pressure. Every business and charity is under pressure as well, losing staff who are not able to, to work, having to try and work from home, um, people not able to participate in, in business, uh, customers not being there, not being able to continue, having to make hard decisions about the long-term survival of those organisations. Every household is under pressure. Getting basic supplies suddenly feels like a, a dangerous, slow and difficult process with a, an unreliable outcome. Uh, making ends meet can be difficult in some households if income uh, that used to be there is no longer there. Long periods of people being together, um, adding to any tension, uh, exacerbating any strained relationships. Long periods of being apart, um, leaving uh, people feeling uh, really struggling with, with relationships and people that they'd come to rely on. Um, every individual is struggling, every public institution and business and charity and household and every individual. The sadness of having to put life on hold, having to postpone that, that holiday, having to put off that wedding. Even grievings, e grieving, even funerals is, uh, is not happening in the same way and being delayed. The, the challenge for our mental health, the worry about people that we care about, anxious about our own health and struggling with isolation. Now more than ever, we need Good Friday. We need Good Friday not just to be something we've heard of and understand in our heads, but something that has changed our hearts and, and changed the way that we respond to these testing, uh, challenging times. We need the help of Jesus Christ because here is someone who knew how to respond well to a, a, a nightmare situation. On Good Friday, uh, he faced the greatest danger and test that anyone can face. And his response to it was so, uh, so amazing that people have remembered it and written about it and talked about it for 2,000 years all around the world as we still do today on Good Friday. So what can we learn from that that could change us? Well, we're going to have three short meditations or reflections. We're going to focus on a few words that uh, we, read, we read earlier from the Bible. Uh, I'm not going to explain a whole chapter. just want a, a few words to, to really sink in and to invite the Holy Spirit to really change us with uh, the words of the Spirit in Scripture. They're words that were written by Peter. Um, he was uh, with Jesus through much of this suffering um, and knew him as well as, as anyone uh, knew him. And he is writing about this soon afterwards. And he's writing to the first generation of Christians, to the first followers of Jesus. Um, and they too are facing very difficult times, very challenging circumstances. 
not in quite the same way as we are today, but, but equally difficult. Uh, harsh treatment, unfair treatment, their lives feeling out of control um, under the authorities. Um, actually, in their case, the authorities were not looking out for their best interests at all, treating them very badly. Uh, and their lives were in danger, in constant danger. And Peter takes them back to Good Friday. And he, and he says, why did Jesus die on, on Good Friday? Well, at least in part, it's not the whole reason Jesus died, but part of the reason is to show you how this is done. To show you what the right response is. Let me just read again more fully Uh, what Peter says about the way Jesus reacted to the danger and difficulty he faced on Good Friday. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. How was Jesus able to respond so well? How was he able to to, to not get his own back, to not get angry, to not get frustrated, to to not be difficult? How was he able to be calm and unafraid and gentle, compassionate, humble? How was he able to do that in the face of unfair, harsh treatment, abuse, and the very imminent death he was facing. How did he do it? Well, it says here, Peter tells us, Jesus entrusted himself to God who judges justly. Jesus knew the outcome because God has made it clear to all of us. God is the judge. He is fair. If, if there's anyone we're angry with and they really deserve our anger, then well, they will get that from God when they face him at the end. It'll be far more terrible than anything we might want to inflict on someone. But better than that, Jesus actually knows that he has come to die for those people and is longing that those people will be forgiven because of his death and will change from the heart. And so he doesn't, he doesn't want to be frustrated or, or angry. He doesn't need to because he's confident in God and he's confident in, of the outcome At the end, whatever happens right now, whatever happens next, and for Jesus that was not going to be easy and he was going to die, whatever happened on that day, Jesus knew the final outcome will be good and God will right every wrong and put everything right and he can can know that that is coming with calm assurance. So we are called, as Christians, if we're Christians, we're called to follow in his footsteps. Perhaps you've seen children doing that on a beach uh, or in some snow and the parents have left these footprints and the children are jumping to try and land in the same places. And Christians are, are called to follow Jesus. His every attitude, his every word to be like that. It's so easy, isn't it, for us to react badly, to give people a hard time at the supermarket, to get frustrated with people in the street. Our, our underlying... Um, Tension and anxiety, our our just sense of unease and concern, it just comes out in these ways. Frustration, anger, grumpiness. Very difficult to live with someone who's feeling anxious and stressed. I wonder if that's you. I certainly see it in myself, and I'm sad to see it. But it is wonderful when you do see signs of the example of Jesus, when I see them in myself, when I see them in other Christians I know. Facing challenges, difficulties, danger, facing it with humility, facing it with courage, facing it with faith, with calm confidence in God. So let me leave us with some words from the Bible to uh, reflect on quietly to, as you listen at home, just to let these words sink in and a question that you could be thinking about. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. And the question, how could you be more like Jesus 
in the way you react to danger and difficulty. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. 1 Peter 2, verse 24. Why did Jesus die on the first Good Friday? Was it just to set an example? Was it only to teach us how to live uh, and how to, to love other people? No, it was far, far more than that. Now, Peter has just told us, look, follow the example of Jesus as he suffered, respond to suffering in the same way. That's what he's just been saying uh, in this letter. But he can't leave it there. He can't stop there. He can't let us think that that is all it takes. Peter would not want us to, to think that being a Christian is, is just about being like Jesus. It's just about copying Jesus. A lot of people think that still today. They think that, well, they say, well, I am a Christian because I try to do what Jesus did and I try to be like him. But that is not a Christian. Jesus... Uh, died uh, for much more than that and Good Friday is about much more than that you see it's no good just trying to be like Jesus because we'll never do it we'll never get anywhere close to it unless he first has died to take away our sin unless he has died in our place to take the punishment for our sin and dealt with our sin we, we never have any chance of being remotely like Jesus um, and, and we just won't manage it. And that is why Peter goes on straight away, after talking about how important it is uh, to follow the example of Jesus, he says, yes, but remember why Jesus died. He, Jesus himself, bore, he carried, he lifted and carried away our sins, our, our disobedience, our rebellion, um, our, 
our wrong attitudes and thoughts and lives and, and words. He took all of that away. He carried it in his body on the cross. When Jesus died, when he was executed, when he was killed on Good Friday, in his body, he was carrying the, the punishment that we deserve, taking the anger of God in our place. I make no apologies for saying this if you've heard this many times before because it's, it's what we need to believe. We, we may know it in our, our, our heads. It's what we need to believe in our hearts and our response to these circumstances we're facing will, 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 will reveal that. How fully do we believe the things that we believe? Now is the time to believe our beliefs and to believe that Jesus carries away our sins and dies for them. It's the heart of the Christian faith. It's the essence of it is this message. Um, it was a swap. It was a substitution. It was an exchange. Jesus dying instead of me, instead of you. We all sin. We all have hearts and lives that are full of disobedience. What we deserve is, is to be put to death. We, the reason we all face death is because we, we all deserve that. It's hard to hear, isn't it? But this is what Jesus said again and again. We all deserve death. And after we die, we we face the, the, real, uh, the reality of hell. Jesus spoke very clearly about hell. Um, we'd, we'd like to hope that that is not part of the Christian message, but, but it is very clearly there that that is what we deserve, and that is why Jesus died for us on Good Friday, to carry away all of that from us, to take our place, to step into our shoes, to die as we deserve to die. You may have seen me illustrate it before and I, I, I'd like to do it again if you imagine this is a bible of course but if you imagine instead of that if you imagine that it is a list of all the things that I've said and done and thought all the things that are wrong all the things that are sinful all the things that God God hates and that that, that really are inexcusable they're, they're all there God knows about all of them he's got a he's got them all he's aware of everything he never misses anything I pretend I'm a good person I like to forget the things that I've done that are wrong, but God saw them and knows. And those things are, are, are a burden. They, they weigh down on me. They separate me from God. Um, I deserve the full, the full weight of those coming down on me, the punishment that I deserve when I die. But Jesus lived an innocent life, a, a good life. Even as we read in the Bible, Peter's account of him. Peter knew Jesus very well and traveled with him and was very close to him. And, and yet Peter said, look, Jesus was a person who, who never did or said anything that could be described as sinful. Um, and, and yet Jesus is the one who, who suffered that burden of my sin. When he died on the cross, he, he took that, he carried those sins away and put them on, on his body as he died on the cross so that he is weighed down by those sins and by the punishment that they deserve. He is separated from God and punished as, he, as he's executed on the cross. And it means that that burden is taken from me so that I can be forgiven by God, loved by God, accepted by God, um, and be free of that weight and that burden and be sure of eternal life with him. Receive the reward that Jesus deserved instead of the punishment that I deserve. Now that is what we need to take to heart at this present time. Um, we have every reason to be afraid of death um, because at the moment we can't escape the, the, the reality of it. Every day on our television we're, we're reading large numbers of people around the world dying of a particular disease and we know that none of us are, are, are totally safe. And we actually never have been. The number of people dying around the world is, is going to be the same as it always was. It's going to be all of us. We're all going to die. Some sooner, some later, but we're all going to die. But here is the wonderful thing, that Jesus has taken that death that we deserve away from us and carried it in our place. And so I can be sure that that death well, that I will receive eternal life, that, that that punishment is taken away, that that death is not something I need to fear now. I don't need to be guilty. I don't need to be afraid. Everything that I feared 
carried away on Good Friday and taken away by Jesus. We're going to reflect on whether that is something you feel and know to be true as you look around you at today's world. So let's reflect again on those words and I'll leave you with a question to ponder. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. When you feel guilty or afraid, how does the death of Jesus reassure you?
1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25. But now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Let me read those words uh, in context. As Peter has just written about following the example of Christ, and then he's, he's written about Jesus dying to take away the punishment for our sins and to set us free from the power of sin. And he goes on, verse 24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Peter there is uh, taking some words from Isaiah. Isaiah 53, Isaiah wrote about Good Friday long before it happened. Peter wrote about Good Friday soon after it happened. And they're both saying the same thing. They're both telling us that Jesus died on the cross to, to set us free from the punishment for sin but also to set us free from the power of sin. And that as these uh, early Christians respond to very difficult, challenging, and scary times, they're told that they can be different and they need to be different because Jesus died for them on Good Friday. When Jesus died for them, he did it for a purpose. Yes, to take away the punishment for their sins, but also to see them change, to see their lives change, to see them own up to how badly they've gone wrong, to see them own up to the way that they have gone astray in their lives, Uh, and then to see those people turn to Jesus and to having gone in the wrong direction, to then turn back to God and say, yes, Jesus, you can be, I want you to be in charge of my life. I don't want to be leading my own life and running my own uh, my own uh, show, I want to be submitting to you. I want you to be my, my shepherd and overseer. And there's a lot here about sheep, isn't there? I guess there were a lot of sheep around in the time of Jesus and the time of Isaiah. Um, I have never really had much to do with sheep. I've never been uh, working on a farm. Uh, a friend of mine actually grew up on a farm in Northern Ireland. He tells me that sheep are really not very intelligent animals. He, he said pigs are surprisingly intelligent. You wouldn't have thought so. But uh, they, really, they really can be quite clever. But sheep, no, not so much. Sheep just keep on getting in trouble. If, if there is no shepherd um, guiding them and leading them every step of the way, then they, they just keep ed- ending up in trouble and in danger and uh, going off in the wrong direction. They, they go astray. Now, if you or I had to describe ourselves um, and we wanted to describe ourselves as being like some animal in the natural world, we might choose perhaps to say, well, I'm, I'm brave like a lion, or I'm wise like a, an owl, or I'm as, uh, as strong as a horse. But Jesus says, no, no, the best animal to describe you is like a, you're like a sheep, Jesus says, because you're always going astray, always going in the wrong direction in your life, always thinking that you know the right way to to live and the right thing to do and the right thing to say and always getting it wrong and ending up far, far away from God and from his uh, commands for our lives. And here is the wonderful thing about Good Friday. Here's why it's so good. Jesus died to bring us back, to offer us a, a fresh start, complete forgiveness, all of our sins dealt with, and to bring us back and to say, look, come back. Um, and, and follow Jesus. But now, Peter says to these Christians, but now that you're Christians, he says, you have returned. You were going away, but you've come back. And you've returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. That is Jesus. The one who cares and leads and guides us and keeps us safe. The one who oversees us. The one who needs to be in charge of our lives. He can be trusted with our souls. Uh, There's no keeping our bodies safe, but our souls can be looked after and protected by him for all eternity, kept safe forever, if we will turn back and follow him. Well, I wonder, 
uh, whether some of us listening to this have, have never really taken that step. Perhaps you were under the impression that a Christian is someone who tries hard to be like Jesus. And you've heard today that is not the case. Yes, we do want to be like Jesus, but we can't achieve that unless we first admit to Jesus that we have gone astray, that our lives are deeply flawed, and our hearts are in the wrong place. And, 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 and unless we come back to him and say, look, I'm returning to my God and my creator. I'm submitting to Jesus. Jesus, you be my shepherd. You be my overseer. And when we do that in a, in a genuine way with our, our whole hearts, then we know that Jesus has carried those sins away from us, dealt with them, and allows us then to respond in a different way. How will we react to these very difficult circumstances we find ourselves in? Will we be like Jesus in all of this? Well, we will be if we faced up to our own sinfulness and how far we've gone astray. And we will be if we've said to Jesus, look, I want to submit to you. My soul is yours. Be my shepherd. Be my overseer. And one last time, I'm going to leave us with these words from the Bible to reflect on and a question to consider. But now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. 1 Peter 2 verse 25. And a question. How aware are you of going astray? And how fully have you turned to Jesus to lead you? joining us again. Um, do join us again on Easter Sunday at 10.30 or 5 o'clock 
when we will be celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead and the hope that that gives us for all eternity. I'm going to finish now by reading words from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 and 21 as a prayer. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever.